And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Kathleen Trigg Jones, live from our uh, Mojo Streaming Broadcast Center in New York City. And today I am joined by a world renowned expert um, and, and wildlife conservationist specializing in African carnivores, a professor of evolution and genetics from John Hopkins University, Dr. Peter Katt, who's here today to talk about uh, the atrocities, this, this uh, just horrible act. Um, the commercial captive lion breeding industry in South Africa. Um, Dr. Kat, or Peter, thank you so much for uh, joining us again on Mojo Streaming today. Uh, let's, do, let's talk first about what the term blood lions means. Well, um, you know, what, what, what happened um, many, many years ago is that um, um, there was a TV program um, that was aired here in the UK, and it was called, um, oh, um, I forget the name of it but right now, but it was all about, you know, how these captive bred lions were hunted. Um, and, you know, various other names have been applied to um, this, this captive breeding of lions to... Um, make them available to uh, to hunters um and uh, the name that i forgot is canned hunting right? right can you explain explain that term because i've read a lot about this uh, about this 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 act and i know that in in some most parts of the world this is is illegal but what does the term canned uh mean in the wildlife uh, community well, um, you know, canned means it, um, you know, you go out and you shoot a lion and it's in the can, right? right. Um, and um, it was um, it was dreamed up by um, some people who went out there and, and made the film about um, the original canned hunting. Um, and it caused, um, you know, a lot of concern in the world, but nobody did anything about it. So... What is now happening is that you've got the the sort of evolution of that um, canned hunting into the blood lions, and um, yeah, it's um, you know it just goes on and on and on in South Africa. Right, you know, um, I it it is something that um, you know we at Mojo Streaming and and as one of the founding. Um, members of, of the of Mojo Streaming community, it it it's one of the those uh issues that we feel very strongly about that um that lions should not be used in this way that um you know these lions are suffering and we have a real problem on our hands and I I believe that it's a problem that everyone should care about and, and sometimes just trying to raise awareness and make people understand why they should care is is part of our job. But um this is an issue that I believe there's an estimated ten thousand lions in the wild. Um and you know the the issue now is that you've bred all these lions and you have a um, over uh, an influx, an overflow of, of of lions. So, what do you do with them at this point? Well, um, yeah, because you see, what happens is that um, the South African breeders were allowed to continue and to continue and to continue breeding captive lions. Um, the original reason why they bred these lions was um you know to to eventually have them enter into the um the trophy hunting industry um a captive bred lion could sell for you know a lot less than than a wild lion and so therefore you know trophy hunters were flocking to south africa to um shoot lions that were basically raised in cages you know i mean so so they ra they raised the lions just so people understand they raised the lions just so that they can release the lions to be shot and killed for trophy hunting yeah and um you know these these lions were so used to humans that um you know, a trophy hunter could come up and and give them maybe a biscuit or something, and you know, it would approach the the, the, the hunter, and then bang, it was dead. Um, but um, what 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 happened in in South Africa is that more and more and more people um, 
in the in the captive breeding industry decided okay well this is this is good profits so we don't know exactly um and this is quite strange really be um we don't know exactly how many lions there are in cages in South Africa to be bred for their products. Um, some people say 8,000, other people say 12,000. Um, but the number of lions that are now in these um, captive situations in South Africa exceed the number of wild lions in, in the whole continent, right? So, you know. Um, we're, th we're saying 10,000 lions on the continent, but, you know, you know you, this continent is huge. Anyway, um, and um, what we don't know is where the, the profit margin for these people breeding lions comes from. Mm -hmm. Because imagine, you know, you have, um, for example, you know, a domestic dog or something like that in your house. Um, what does it cost in in terms of the the um, the food that you need to provide for that dog? Maybe right. what you know a thousand dollars a year, fifteen hundred dollars a year. Now you've got a lion, right? So I mean, it's it's massively more expensive to feed that lion because you can't go out and and um, you know buy some food from from a uh, a pet shop. Um, no, you have to have some really good quality food, uh, which means, you know, a cow or a donkey or whatever, whatever. Now, the problem is that um, these captive breeders um, were all banking on the eventual sale of males into the trophy hunting industry. Now, unfortunately, what happens is if you breed lions, you get 50% males and 50% females, yeah. um, right? So, you know, the females were all going to be, you know, set up for, for breeding and this and that and the other thing. Um, but it was the males that they were concentrating on. Now, the bottom fell out of the market because um, the... United States, which was one of the biggest consumers of these captive bred trophies, um, decided that, um, look, we're, the U.S. said we're not going to allow imports of lion trophies unless it can be shown that um, the killing of that lion is going going to contribute to the conservation of the species. In, in what way? Well, but it was the males that they were concentrating on. Now, the bottom fell out of the market because um, the United States, which was one of the biggest consumers of these captive bred trophies, um, decided that, um, Look, we're, the U.S. said we're not going to allow imports of lion trophies unless it can be shown that um, the killing of that lion is going to contribute to the conservation of the species. In, in what way? Well... You see, what, what, what the U.S. said is that if you go out to Africa and you shoot a lion, um, in order to be able to import that trophy, you know, which is the reason why you went there anyway, um, is to um, show in one way or another that um, by killing that animal, you're actually doing good for conservation of the species mm. okay. so what happened was that um, the US um, import authorities and and uh, the US Fish and Wildlife said look there's absolutely no conservation benefit to having all these these captive bred lions 
um, provided for trophies. I mean, you know, the, the killing a lion like that has absolutely no conservation uh, positive benefit for the species. So the U.S. said, okay, we're going to disallow any further imports of trophy hunted captive bred lions from South Africa. Now, this caused mayhem, okay? okay. Because 60% um, of the trophy hunters um, coming to South Africa to shoot these captive bred lions came from the US. So, you know, the market now went completely sideways. Right. Right. Um, but then <clears throat> what happened was that um, the, the captive breeders in South Africa were thrown a bone. <laughs> okay. Right. So what they did is um, they entered into contract. What I was saying was that the, the South African breeders were no longer allowed to um, sell their imports of lion trophies into the United States. Right. Um, and but that didn't. That wasn't enough, though, right? So that didn't stop them from still uh, finding ways in, or I guess now they're doing it illegally. Well, um, what happened was that um, you know what what I was saying is that they were thrown a bone, mm -hmm. and um, the South African breeders were then allowed to sell um, lion bones to um, Vietnam, to Laos, to Cambodia, and um, because uh, Thailand, and um, you know, this was supposedly something that was desired by those people there because it, it, it um, was a component of um, traditional uh, Chinese medicine, right? Now, it used to be tigers that, that supplied all those bones and things like that 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 um you know were were so much sought after mm -hmm. but then um the practitioners in um the the traditional chinese medicine predict practitioners said that oh we, you know we can substitute lion bones for tiger bones so then that became a um a huge market for the captive lion breeders in in South Africa. Um, so they went from trophies to bones. Mm. Right? I mean, how cynical is that? Yeah, it, it's really it's it's unbelievable. What role do um, do tourists play in in all of this? Very good question. Um, I did um, an analysis um, uh, a couple of years ago about um, you know the the um, the ways that these captive breeders in South Africa make their money um, because um, what they do is they you know they they start out with a little lion cub and that lion cub is um, then very very profitable because it's um, being allowed to be petted by tourists and also you know volunteers paying volunteers come in from you know countries in in europe and the usa um to um supposedly take care of these lions because you know they're they're going to be reintroduced into the wild nonsense right yeah. so that is the first stage um you got this little cub and um you know you can you can um, make sure. lots of money off it right. right then the cub grows up and then what you can do is you can recruit people um to take walks with lions tourists again mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so you have an hour um, out in the wild or whatever, you know, you're walking with lions and you're taking your selfies and absolutely wonderful. Um, and then the lions get too big uh, or too dangerous to be walked. And then, you know, they're into that mill of the, um, the trophy hunting or the bone trade. So once they get to that stage, that's when they um, release them to be hunted? Well. 
release is um, is a <laughs> look. Um, what what people said in South Africa is that um, the lions need to be. You cannot hunt a captive bred lion. So what you need to do is, you know, some these lions need to be put out into the wild, wild, um, and then um, after a certain amount of time, you can hunt. Okay. Um, but what happens in South Africa is that, the, you know, the the lions are put into a fenced area, a field, and um, given some food because you know they they've been raised by by humans. Right, right. And then they're given a little bit of food, and then a hunter turns up and you know shoots them dead. But it's a um, for the most part, it's a controlled environment, so they're not going to escape this area. No, so of course not. Sitting ducks, course not. essentially. Of course not. Um, and in South Africa has um, you know various different provinces, and depending on the province, um, you know the lion has to be released into the wild for maybe two weeks, okay, two months, whatever, and then it is considered a wild lion. Wow! Get that wow. <laughs> wow. right. Wow. And then you also made, uh, you've, you've highlighted the difference between, uh, like you here in the U.S., for instance, a lion is not considered um, livestock, right? It's a, it's a, um, a wild animal that you, you couldn't just have as a, as a pet. You can't just have it on your, your property. But in South Africa, that's, uh, in other parts of the world, that's, that's not the case, correct? No, that, that is correct because, um, you know, South Africa, um, had um, um, a big uh, debate among two ministries. It was the Ministry of Environment and it was the Ministry of Agriculture because the um, wild lions um, were supposed to fall onto, you know, under the Ministry of Environment and then, you know, whatever, whatever. But um, what is happening now is that um, lions have been classified as livestock. Captive bred lions have been classified as livestock by the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. So, um, you know, those lions are owned 100% uh, by the breeders and they can pretty much do whatever they want with them. Wow. What would you, based on your research and all the work that you do, tell me what you're doing to stop this practice? Well, um, what we have to do is, look, um, a lot of people have um, um, been very, very active and very good um, at the local level in, in South Africa, you know, to try and um, stop this industry. And... You know, despite all their efforts, um, you know, it's it's really not going anywhere, right? Um, because they're up against a government that that has blinkers on and just wants, you know, this this whole industry right. to continue. So, in my opinion, the only way that we can um, stop this this captive breeding of of lions is that. Um, we need to do more of what the U.S. did, right? Yeah. To say, right, we will no longer allow the import of hunting trophies for captive bred lions. Also, what we need to do is we need to um, somehow intervene into the import um, uh, permits mm -hmm. that are given to um, the, the the breeders in South Africa to be able to export their their lion bones. Mm. Um, and where that export is mainly going, where to to China? No, um, you know China. <laughs> you know they're 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 very careful. Okay. Um, China is not the major importer of these lion bones, but what they do is they have um, a lot of people in 
neighboring states who facilitate the import. Like I said, um, it goes to Thailand, it goes to um, Vietnam, it goes to Laos. Um, so those are the primary importers. But, and, and it's used for, for medicine, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, you know, um, one of the, um, the main reasons why um, lion bones are, are so important is that um, there's something called tiger bone wine, right? Okay. Now, substituted now for, for lion bone wine. And um, so what you do is you take some rice wine, you stick the bones in for a while, and you brew them up, and you know you sell it for a huge amount of money. Um, and then you know there's all the uh, the, the supposed benefits um, that um, um, accumulate if you if you take these. Um, um, products um, made from from um, lion bones, and um, you know it cures everything from rheumatism to you know you name it, right? Um, but it is all. I hate to say this, but you know, Chinese traditional medicine needs to prove that the animal products that they're using and which have led to you know destruction of yeah. pangolins and tigers and lions and whatever mm -hmm. actually have a medicinal benefit right right so let's let's go back a little bit then um, I, I asked you the work that you're doing and, and why you're doing it um, and you you mentioned the United States sanctions um, regulations on this, um, why do you think the South African government isn't as concerned? Is it that there's just so many other issues to deal with in South Africa um, that they, they don't really consider the, the preservation of animals or the cruelty or treatment of animals to be a thing that, that, they sh that the government should be interfering in? Well, South Africa has always um, been a big proponent of um, captive breeding in one way or the other, you know, wildlife ranching um, on properties, um, captive breeding of these lions, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, South Africa has commodified um, their wildlife. And so what you have is individual owners. So um, you can have, for example, on a, on a, wildlife ranch. Uh, you can have um, wildebeest and you can have impalas and you can have um, sesame and you can have this and that. Um, all of those are owned by the rancher. So what uh, South Africa has done is they've made a massive, massive industry out of wildlife ranching. Yeah. And, um, you know, what, what we're looking at now is uh, relatively small component of that ranching, which is the, um, the captive lion breeding. Now, South Africa, um, believe it or not, is also one of the major breeders of captive bred tigers. Okay. Um, so, I, you, so if you're going, the thing is that you're going against an entire government, but it's not just the government. It's it's um, there's a lot of money involved in this trade, not just for the, um, the the traders and the hunters, but the government's really benefiting from this as well. And uh, and then there's also just not the same maybe respect for the the lives of these animals. Um, well, that what what have. you know, like like I was saying, you know. Um, Wildlife in South Africa has been commodified. It's it's been made into livestock in 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 one way or the other. And um, what's happening in South Africa is that um, you know they they a lot of these these um, ranches that now have wild animals. Um, 
used to be cattle ranches, and uh, you know, then the cattle couldn't deal with the, um, the the arid conditions or whatever. So wildlife came in, and you know, the the farmers made huge profits. Right. The the problem is that um, if you want to um, commodify wildlife, um, you need to take a couple of steps back because South Africa believes and tells people that um, wildlife on ranches adds up to conservation of species. And that is, you know, we're, we're really <laughs> stretching the envelope there. Right. Um, because um, South Africa says that, you know, we've got, you know, all these um, rhinos um, living on, on private ranches, so they can all be added up into, you know, the number of rhinos surviving in Africa. But, um, you yeah, they're... South Africa has has um, done a good job in terms of trying to um, convince people that um, private ranchers and private ownership of, of um, wildlife is conservation. And that's where I completely differ. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Kat, there's some other things that I wanted to talk about because if another real big issue is if you're successful we can stop you know the the illegal trade the breeding and all of this what do we do with the estimated eight to ten thousand animals wild lions that are right or not wild lions but the lions that are that are in cages right now what would you do with them you said earlier that these lions are used to being around humans they don't have the survival skills if you just let them out into the wild plus you can't just really release 10,000 um, lions into the wild without without some kind of a problem so what what would the solution be well you know you hit the nail on the head there because these animals look like lions but they aren't lions mm. right um they they have lost all their their natural instincts and they can never be released back into the wild not yeah. ever um so if this industry is going to be stopped what um, needs to happen is that those lions um have to stop breeding first of all Right. Okay. So step cut. one is to stop the breeding. Step yeah. one, cut the breeding. Okay. Step two, um, you know, perhaps allow um, the, the, the sordid trade to go on for a couple of more years um, to get rid of all the, you know, lions already in the, in, in, on the, um, uh, you know, escalator to, um, okay. you know, these, these sorts of um, products that um, they're supposed to deliver but um, yeah basically um, it's a very very difficult question because um, a lot of people who are concerned about um, animal welfare and um, uh, humane treatment of animals you know come into the picture and they say well you cannot you cannot just euthanize all right. those lions, right? And then, um, the, and then I even read that the way that they would, um, that they they are doing that is is a, a, a it's like they're it's not even in a humane way, right? No, I mean you know they just shoot them, um, you know so that's, that's right. Uh, Right. So if they, you just um, open it up, kind of like the, I guess the bears in our country. When there's an, when when we have the bear population um, getting out of control, then they open it up to hunting. Yeah, but um, you know these these South African breeders are um, first of all they have they have lots of political connections. Mm -hmm. um, they couldn't have survived this long without um, you know having some really good politicians on their side. You know, way up to presidential level in South Africa. Um, but um, what we need to do now is somehow convince the politicians in South Africa 
that this is no longer you know going to going to happen the breeders will always breed they're not going to stop anything voluntarily and why should they? it's not illegal no it's completely right. legal in south africa yeah right. yeah so they will continue breeding, uh, you know, until the cows come home. <laughs> um, but but um, who, if, who has the who who could put pressure on the South African government? Is this a United Nations issue? Does this fall under, you know, a, no? You're shaking your head. Not at all. <laughs> no, it's it's a commercial issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, the captive breeding of lions will never stop unless. Um, the breeders are not um, earning money from 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 that uh, captive breeding anymore. Right. Uh, well, you you clearly have your hands uh, full, Dr. Cat. But I think that um, the work has to be done by someone. So we we really appreciate you and the work that you're doing. How can people find out more about you and more about this uh, trade of uh, and and slaughtering of blood lions? Well, I. Um, with with other people run a uh, charity here in the uk called lion aid and um you know you can look us up on um, lionaid.org um on on our website um and but also i i would urge people to um get in touch with um other people in south africa who are really trying very very hard um on a local basis to try and um, defeat this this sordid trade in in captive animals lions um, at a ground level. Right. So, because this is not just about lions. I mean, right now we're focusing on lions, but we can go down the list of other animals that are also um, elephants and and other animals that are also being um, treated this way. Yeah, and um, you know what we need to do is, as a world society, um, is we need to, you know, have a little bit of a think. I mean, you know, we've had a year of COVID where we're all sitting at home, um, and um, you know, we hopefully have had some time to think about what is important. Yeah. Is it important um, to us to conserve animals in the wild? Or do we accept that, um, you know, these animals are always going to be traded as um, skins and bones and yeah. whatever, tusks and um, horns and things like that, right? What, what is um, the grim reality? What is the grim reality if this doesn't change? Well, then what we're faced with is animals behind fences um, that, um, you know, we think are wild. And um, it's sort of a, um, instead of wild Africa, it's Disneyland Africa. Mm. Right. And, and, the, and, and the ones in the wild are also not surviving, right? So we have a, we have a problem. So we'll be left with, with just these, these uh, beautiful creatures that are not in their natural um, habitat. Well, it depends. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, look, I mean, you know, we, we, we can go to a zoo and we can see a lion, right? Um, and um, that lion is, is happy, it's being fed, and, um, you know, we, we can go and see it and we can enjoy it. But um, is that conservation? And that is the big thing. Is, are we doing the best we can in terms of conserving wild animals or are we just utilizing them for their bits and pieces and bones and whatever right this is where we need to make a really good distinction and it comes down to um it comes down to us you know it it it, it really comes down to us we need to decide how we want to see wild animals if we want to see wild animals behind a fence sure you know we can do that if we want to see wild animals living free that's a big 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 right ask in terms of um, money in terms of investment in terms of um, um, 
morals and ethics and things like that, you know, because um, we've we've taken over the world, humans. We have. And um, so, you know, what what um, what we say goes. So, um, you know, I I grew up. Um, fortunately, um, in a world where animals were free and there was lots of wildlife. And, you know, as a kid um, living in Malaysia, I could get on my bike and I could be in tropical jungle within 15 minutes. It's not available anymore. Wow. And, um, you know, we, we, we really need to um, start thinking about what is important to us. Is it a tiger in a cage that we can all see or is a tiger in the wild that we cannot see but um you know we have that sort of vision right. in our mind that there right. is a wild tiger out there somewhere yeah wow that that's the question of the day dr catwell i just want to thank you again for taking time out to meet with us um you're a friend of mojo stream and we'll continue to follow you and support you and um and please do the same for us and continue to to watch mojo streaming and um hopefully you know what it takes it takes one right you just have to keep plugging away until there's change and change only only happens uh, when somebody makes a decision that we've had enough. So thanks for the work that you're doing. Thank you to Kathleen. Um, you're absolutely wonderful. And, um, you know, like you say, um, it just takes a few people to form a group and then that group grows. And then, you know, we, we get into people's minds and we start influencing people and we start educating people. And then, off we go, right? Yeah, that's the way. A bit of advice: stick with the young generation. They're the ones that are that are relentless. They're the ones that are are going to ask why. Why is that? Why? Yeah, <laughs> remember everything. What did Doctor was it? Doctor Seuss said everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Right. Have a great day.